Hi, good morning. Uh, these baked beans are other remains from what I made yesterday and um, how I made them in a fairly abbreviated form is coming up. Um, these I made in anticipation uh, about six weeks away is July 4th and uh, gonna have a little party and baked beans is uh, in my mind necessary at a July 4th party. Can't wait to take that next bite. These came out really well. They're not your average baked beans. They're um, baked beans with a little bit of an umbian, umbrian flair. Now I'm gonna change a few things from the recipe that is coming up here, or the way I made it coming up. Gonna go with more beef short ribs. There was enough this, but uh, more is better when it comes to short ribs. Uh, and I'm going to layer it up a little differently and use just a little bit less sauce. And I'm going to further umbrianize the sauce. And that's just based on feedback that I, I got from... I mean, everybody liked this. Nobody, nobody said change a thing. One guy likes more salt. Other one said it was perfect. The salt was perfect. Blah, blah, blah. But... Uh, you know, I could see making these even better. I'm going to go to one type of beans, the um, Bianca de España beans, which is that these big, the big ones on here. They're good, um, but enough. You know, here comes how I made it. Oh, and before that, just a quick shot of a uh, glass of wine this morning on the hilltop with uh, some of the people who evaluated it last night. Um, that is a, you know, that's a tough crowd. They're friendly, but they're serious about food. And uh, they all liked it. Uh, so uh, just uh, here comes those guys real quickly. Il salto lo fa quando il cane gli si sdraia davanti al divano, allora... Mi passa sopra e mi dice che da un'ora che sto aspettando. Uso. No, è vero, cazzo. E non è se sta anche lamentando. Ha ragione. Non è Some of my advisors who uh, ah, grazie, tested grazie, the beans grazie, last night. L'apprezzo. Siamo in un battesimo. No, no, no. L'ho mandato, eh? Ok, so we'll get into it here in a minute, but I'm going to get these ribs cooking. They're broiling. I'm broiling them here with the, uh, with the bone up. Get the heat directly on the bone to start cooking that marrow. And that's all the further I need to take these is to get that marrow good and hot. And then uh, they'll get finished off with um, in a pot with a bunch of other things. And then back in the oven they go. Okay, so quick trick trip up to the butcher shop there. Come back to find, look at the end of that, uh, that rib. Right there, the marrow sizzling nicely there. So I'm just let these broil for a little bit more and then uh, take them out. In the meantime, I've got, I stopped up at the grocer and got guanciale, pig cheek, and pancetta. Got a nice piece of pancetta. In other words, bacon. Nice meaty bacon and uh, very tasty, and here's my guanciale. So look at the difference between these two, the, the fat content. Pancetta, guanciale. So uh, yeah, a lot of people put bacon in, or ham in their baked beans, and that does not sound like a bad idea to me, and this is the form the ham is gonna take. So um, yeah, there, there's a, no prohibition against mixing meats here, or it doesn't seem to be. And so the beef short ribs and this guanciale, pancetta, this could be a nice meaty uh, pot of beans. Okay, just to get this straight in my head, what this go-around is going to look like. And by the way, when I say go-around, I mean experiment. I was up on the hill and just talked to a couple of my friends up there. Okay, so this guanciale, this is all I'm going to use because we're going to deal, make it a three, three cans of beans. Cannellini. Porlote and uh, uh, Bianche de España, which I think just means white beans of Spain. Uh, so, 
the, uh, the guanciale. That's how much I'm going to use for these three cans. This is how much of the pancetta. So these two will go in the freezer for some future dish. And I, I downsized my onion to about that big. Now, pretty soon here, I'm going to take out of the oven that uh, these ribs that are cooking in there. And uh, that's a beef short rib under broiler. So what I'm going to do is use a half a bottle of tomato sauce, the onion, the guanciale, the pancetta, and the short rib are all going to go in at the same time. Then I'm going to add water, and I might actually add another bottle of sauce. So that becomes something that can cook down. I'll add a lot of water to that and just let that cook for a good long time. Then at some point, I'm going to get in with the ketchup, barbecue sauce, mustard, lean parents. Okay, before we add the short ribs and the tomato sauce, I've got a little bit of oil in the bottom of this pan. Okay, I turned down the heat a little bit. I'm going to turn it back up. Because that is some good smelling, a uh, good smelling starting point, so that's a good sign. And as soon as those onions turn clear, in goes the, uh, in goes the short rib. Okay, a little unanticipated step here. There's a little bit of red wine there. And the reason for that is to uh, deglaze the pan a little bit. And that was my fault for maybe trying to rush these onions along a little bit too fast. Okay. And that's a, that's just a nice Chianti. Okay, so there are the short ribs and and the juice from the short ribs and yep let's just get our tomato sauce and our water in there turn down the heat and give it some time okay so there's all kinds of sauces this is a uh, moody uh, tomatoes of Sicily and it's pretty good there's a lot of good sauces here uh, tomato sauces no spices in them, just tomatoes and salt. They're fantastic. I mean, they just taste like tomatoes. Okay, so in goes the water. And I'm left with a nice clean bottle. Okay, and this is the sauce I just bought some of because uh, a really good cook uses this. Okay, so there we are with a lot of tomato. Enough that my rib is just wanting to, it's under enough. So the heat comes up on here for a while till that boils. And when that starts boiling, the heat goes back down and that's where it sits covered, getting stirred every, uh, at least every 15 minutes until it gets close to being done. And at that point, you uh, need to stir it more often because it's thick. Okay, things are cooking along nicely here. So let's just give that a stir, and while that was was bubbling away there, what time is it? 12.30. Okay, so I should be looking about maybe 2, 3 o'clock. This will be cooked down. But uh, while that was uh, doing its thing, I was reading a little bit, and it reminded me of uh, Umbria and spices, and I thought, okay, a little sage is not going to hurt in here. Since I have fresh, fresh sage growing right outside, why not? Okay, one handful of sage coming up. The moment of truth. It's cooked down pretty good nicely. The meat is shrinking at the level of the sauce is below it. It's still not super thick. But uh, that's okay. We can give it some more time. Oh. Okay. So the sauce is definitely done. I just turned off the heat. Um, you can... Uh, See, it's reduced by about half. It was up to oh, about here. And uh, that means the water is gone. And, well, it's reduced. Okay. So, these beans. These are the cannelloni beans. These darker ones here are the borlotti beans. And these are the Bianca di Espana. So, let's um, mix them up nicely and make sure they're rinsed well. Okay, so I've picked out a few beans here to taste. 
This is, uh, this is one of the uh, Bianchi de España. And um, I'm going to say my order of preference is this. The Berlanti, they're good. They're good, but they have a slight kidney bean taste, which is not bad. But I like the Cannellini better and the Bianca di Spagna the best. And it turns out this is the one that was advised to me. Now the next question is, how much of each of these do we add? So I'm going to eyeball it and just get enough in there to uh, a decent squirt, more of a squirt than that. And I'm thinking that's maybe a quarter cup. Looking at it there. And a quarter cup. The ketchup. I tasted the barbecue sauce. And uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So uh, let's uh, oh, add a little bit of Lee and Perrins to it. Yeah. Uh, then mix all that up. And into the pan it goes. Okay, so I like how that's coated fairly well. And uh, yep, that's the essence of it. In central Pennsylvania, this was called doctored beans. You know, who's going to doctor the beans? And if you have too many doctors, they still come out good because the doctors have sense. Okay, last bean there. Okay, now let's just flatten those out. Get them in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking this. Uh, I hope this comes out like I think it will. And then in goes the, uh, the sauce on top. So that's going to end up having a good layer of sauce on there. Okay, so. Get that out of the way. Down there. So this is our Umbrian layer. Pancetta, guanciale, beef short ribs, cooked in tomatoes with some onion, tomato sauce for a good long time. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna take the meat off the bone on the pork ribs or not. But that's, you know, okay, okay. Then we'll see how this goes. I'm just going to let that sauce work its way down in around the beans there. Okay, so what I've done with that short rib is pulled it all off the bone, all the meat off the bone, and separated the big pieces of fat. So there it is before I put on the last bit of sauce. And uh, I can tell you this sauce, I've, been, I've tasted it. it. Oh, there's another piece of fat from the short ribs in there. Uh, in any case, that fat's really good. It just seems too sinful to just eat it though. So I'll just put a little bit of sauce on there. And now we've got know, three dishes in one. We've got vegetables from the tomatoes, certainly meat, certainly have a healthy dose of fats, and uh, the beans. Vegetables. Okay, so quick correction 135C is actually 275 Fahrenheit. And this is not bubbling. But, and I've been here an hour and 15 minutes at kind of a low heat. So 275. So I'm just going to give it its time. Okay, the moment of truth is coming here. Six o'clock. I'm supposed to take this up the hill. Okay, so we, we did almost all of it here. Half of the people have gone. Two of them are ex restaurant owners who said they liked it. And everybody else here is a fantastic cook and knows good food, and it was generally liked pretty well. But I'll make a few adjustments. Okay, so everybody's eaten. Um, the one guy was a professional chef. And uh, everybody can cook, as I've said. And uh, they liked it. it. Got thumbs up all around. Of course, some wanted to add some uh, 
other touches like one very good cook wanted to add uh, pepperoncino make it a little hotter but I told him that's not the American baked beans Even in the peace and quiet of Umbria, leave it to two of my best friends here <laughs> to have uh, fairly loud bikes. One's a Honda, but the other one's a Harley. And uh, yeah, they don't break the peace too much.